country. The Torres Umija reports is anchored on obtaining information from the health facilities while trying to look at ways of putting off the challenges they face in their line of duties. Crucial information from all public health facilities and tackling the constraints faced by the health workers in their daily routine is the reason for the countrywide tour led by the National Assembly's Select Committee on Health. The first leg of the tour of the National Assembly's Select Committee on Health, Women, Children, Disaster, Refugees and Humanitarian Relief, spearheaded by the Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly, Honorable Fatumbai, sheltered seven public health facilities within the Greater Banjul and the West Coast region of the Gambia. Day one of the tour saw the Deputy Speaker and entourage at the Serekunda Health Center, Bakau Health Center and Serekunda General Hospital, where she formally explained to the officers in charge what their purpose of visit was. Fatu Cham, Keva Sonko, both officers in charge at the Serekunda and Bakau Health Center, expressed similar constraints to the committee head, central to which are lack of proper admission beds, furniture, inadequate medical supplies, equipment, and more so staff training. Babanjai, the CEO of the Serekunda General Hospital, after touring the health facility with the committee members, held a brief meeting with the committee, where the head of the committee expressed satisfaction with the services of the hospital. She said the committee will work closely with the hospital in uplifting the mortuary, which has only four chambers, which she believes are not enough. I am very perturbed by the size of your mortuary. I have been reliably informed that there are only four chambers. And the catchment area of this hospital is very large. So I think something must be done as a matter of urgency. Something must be done about it. The second day of the tour saw the committee at Fajikunda Health Center, Tanka Tanka Psychiatric Hospital, become a major health center where they followed a similar procedure with the officers in charge. Lamin Marong and Ibu Kor, both officers in charge at the Fajikunda and Birkama Health Center, thanked the committee for the visit since it is anchored on uplifting the hospital and they also expressed their constraints in the job. At the Tanka Tanka Psychiatric Unit, officials of the hospital outlined their constraints. What we want is sensitization program because it is very important to the community can meet. It will be very important to sense this message so as to give them a guideline whereby they will also be able to intervene in po that point in time. Because what normally happens here is people are late to refer their patient to the, for treatment. And that is a very critical condition because you cannot stay with somebody whom you know as a brother or as a sister. All of a sudden the individual started changing his or her behavior which you are not, which you are not able to detect until he become a threat within the family or to herself. And that will be the time for you to intervene. No, I'm saying no to that. You are staying with somebody, you've seen her attitude or behavior changing. Ask for immediate help. After a tour tour conducted in these health facilities, these were the views of the committee head. Um, we have already seen six facilities from the Greater Banjul area and also the West Coast region. And we'll be moving out to, to Buyam um, to visit the Suleiman Junkung's hospital tomorrow. And we have, as you have rightly said, we have discussed their success stories. But we have also discussed um, their challenges ranging from staffing, drug availability, the erratic supply of energy, water and electricity, security, to name a few. And we hope, upon the conclusion of the tour, to do a report which will be laid in Parliament and submitted to the Line Ministry with our recommendations for action. Of course, after the report is submitted, we will follow up to ensure that our recommendations are implemented. With the first-hand information obtained from these health facilities in relation to challenges they face in the work, health workers express cautious optimism that the National Assembly Select Committee on Health will quickly come to their aid. Uminjai, GRTS. A five-day trainers forum on clinical management of gender-based violence ended Friday at a local hotel. The Synergy as Fatima Tasimaha reports brought together social workers, police, child welfare officers and community health nurses. 
one of the activities put in place by the Network Against Gender-Based Violence that seeks to bring together social workers, police child care officers, and community health nurses in the front line to manage gender-based violence on psychosocial support. It is one of its kind that was held by the Network to train social workers on the prevention and protection of gender-based violence. In that light brought the establishment of One Stop Center in August 2013, a multi-agency steering committee which looks at all violence-relating issues. Speaking at the closing ceremony, the Deputy Director of Social Welfare, Falu So, who is also the lead facilitator, said this training will build the capacity and strengthen the existing partnership between the social workers and the network. So that um, they are not only able to identify cases of gender-based violence, but when identified, they will be able to ensure that they respond, especially by giving psychosocial support to those people. We also learned from the, from the review, death review that was done by the Network Against Gender-Based Violence, that there has been gaps, gaps in the response mechanisms towards um, gender-based violence in this country. And one of those loopholes was the issue of procedures, protocols, or guidelines that would support key professionals in ensuring that um, they respond effectively on time and efficiently towards gender-based violence. He urged participants to use the knowledge gain as gender-based violence is a moral and social crime that needs addressing. He cited that his department is keen to render their support on issues of gender-based violence. So commanded the Network for their Courche Against Gender-Based Violence. Gender-based violence is a serious issue that needs collaborative efforts, said Njunu Drame, the chairperson of the network. We need to work together as a team. <clears throat> we need to collaborate. We need to support each other. But we also ought to recognize each other's professional and, and statutory limit. Each of us, when we work together as a police, we probably would be able to do a lot. When we work alone as Department of Social Welfare, we would <laughs> achieve something. When we work to, alone, as the Minister of Health or as health personnel, we would. But that, that victim, that survivor who requires all our holistic support may not or will not get the requisite support because we are working alone. Drame, in his deliberation, told participants that they need to be competent in their various disciplines in order to earn respect and admiration. He urged participants to disseminate the knowledge gain at all levels. Per Jata of the Social Welfare on behalf of participants assured officials of using the knowledge gain in their various departments. Certificates were awarded to each participant at the end of the program. This training, however, transcended beyond looking at eradicating violence. It has well exposed the significance of education and development. For GRTS News, I am Fatou Matasimaha. Well, time not to take our first break. The news continues momentarily. Independent Stadium, featuring Ring, Asun Jai and the Gewelgi Band, Super Eagles, G, Jelly Mari, T Smalls, Bye Babu, Tamayi, Mandik Mori, Benjamin, ST, Jelly Bakuyate, Broke, Humanity Stars, backed by the Humanity Stars, entrance, 75 the lasses for children, 100 the lasses regular tickets, and 300 the lasses VIP. It's an afternoon gig, starting at 5 p.m., 5 p.m., live at the Independent Stadium on the 2nd February 2014. Welcome back and off to the international scene. Guinea is on the performing health sector is struggling to deal with the devastating measles outbreak. Reports say at least 400 children have fell victim to the outbreak. Doctors have begun administering antibiotics to help deal with the disease while plans are on the way for an immediate vaccination campaign. We have details in this report. Since the beginning of the year, workers in this health center have been paying careful attention to children barking. A measles epidemic has broken out in Guinea. More than 400 suspected cases have been reported in the past three weeks, 35 cases confirmed, 
and one death. <laughs>